All right, quite the welcome. Uh, thank you all for being here today. I see our Fab Four there. Um, <laughs> You know, we're really, it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome day to be together, and I just want to thank you all for coming to welcome our new head women's basketball coach. Um, your presence means a great deal to all of us. It also demonstrates, you know, your unwavering support and commitment to what you're, you know, what we're building here in the athletic department at Pitt. Today is really the result of countless people um, working together to bring an extraordinary person and leader to our women's basketball program. You know, and it does start with the leadership of our university, Chancellor Gallagher and our board of trustees. Um, alignment of leadership is invaluable in building any successful organization. Without it, it will not happen. But with it, there are no limits to what we can accomplish. And I'm just thankful to be aligned with Chancellor Gallagher and our board of trustees who are helping us build a culture of comprehensive excellence. And I just want to give a special thanks to the whole administrative team, our coaches involved, our staff who are here today. Throughout this process, I told every coach we talked to that, um, that I love our team. And I would put them up against, against anyone in the country, and I mean it. Um, you are selfless and relentless in this search. You are as confident as I that we would find the right leader. And late last night, when there were dozens of, literally, um, staff gathered in our offices making plans for today, I realized how special you all are, how important the team is, and frankly, how excited we are all to be a part of building our women's basketball program into a source of pride for our department. Our efforts would not be possible without the commitment and support of the represented by many of the donors, courtside seat holders, um, and people who are here today to meet our new coach. It never happens with just one person, one coach, or one player. You know, it does take a university to make it all happen. And as your athletic director, I'll just tell you that it is one of the most important and rewarding parts of the job is hiring a head coach. We all know that this person directly impacts the lives of other people's children, and it is a critical decision. We had great expectations of what we needed in our next leader, and we did not settle for anything less. And we found that leader in Tori Verdi. You know, I have known Coach Verdi since 2013, when I first met him at my press conference at Eastern Michigan. He was the head women's basketball coach then, and I was the brand new director of athletics. For two years, I watched Coach Verdi's work ethic. I saw how he built relationships with his players, the interactions with our donors and our community. I saw his concept of family come to life. I'll get through this. I remember the tragic passing of a player. Um, and I saw how Tori embraced every kid on our team and brought that family together in the toughest of times. I saw Coach Verdi built a program that no one expected to be successful, and he did it the right way with the right people. And after Tory left UMass, I always kept an eye on his progress, and like his personality that you will all come to know, he stayed in contact with me because people matter to him. Coach Verdi continued his career at UMass, and he did what no one expected was possible again. For the past seven years, under Coach Verdi's leadership, he built not just a successful team, but a program. His proven ability to build and elevate programs is undeniable. What I remember about Coach Verdi then, and know about him today, is that he coaches for all the right reasons. And when I think of the words passion, confidence, and family, I think of Coach Verdi. And when we thought about the type of person that we needed at Pitt, Coach Verdi was the perfect fit. We wanted a coach who was grounded in who they are as a head coach. We wanted a coach with integrity and exceptional work ethic. We needed a coach who could prove they had built and built successful teams from the bottom up. We needed a coach whose highest priority is making sure our student athletes experiences are extraordinary. And most importantly, we needed a head coach who had the courage and the confidence that they can and want to build it together with us at Pitt. 
There's no place like Pittsburgh. It is the city of champions. And there's no greater feeling than doing something that others believe is not possible or has never been done before. You know, you win with people, and I am confident we are going to win with Coach Verdi. And one final comment. Um, Coach Verdi is also humble. Um, his mom is here to remind him of that. I'll tell you that when we walked into the Pete and she saw his picture up there, um, she said, you know, it's going to be down tomorrow and you've got a lot of work to do. Um, and last night when I called Tori and said, hey, we'd love to do this press conference tomorrow at noon, he said, absolutely, we've got a lot of work to do and I'm all in. Well, that's what we needed and we are all in with you, Coach. So today we're thrilled to welcome his family, um, his wife Heather, his kids Avery and Braden, his mother Beverly, his sister Danielle, and his brother Todd to our team. So ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you our new head women's basketball coach, Tori Verdi. Well, you're absolutely right. Um, that jersey will not fit me. <laughs> so you're one for one. And then how much do I owe you for saying all those nice things about me? I've been married for over 25 years and I have not heard things like that. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for being here. The past 16 hours, as you can imagine, have been a whirlwind. I want to thank Heather Like. Jan Toscano, and all the members of the search committee. You guys did good. <laughs> really good. Great hire. I also want to thank my former UMass administration, Ryan Bamford and Kirsten Britton. Lastly, I want to thank my UMass basketball family. I love you guys and will always be here for you. I want to thank my family for being here today and supporting me. My wife, Heather. I would not be here without you. My children, Tyler, Avery, and Braden, I know it's not easy being a son, daughter of a coach. I know that I miss out on so many things that go on in your life. Just know that I love you so much, and I'm always here for you. To my mom, my biggest cheerleader, get to know her, I think the mic cut off. And I should say, you'll probably hear her as well, especially at the games. Thank you for showing me how to love people unconditionally. Today is such an exciting day. Today is the day that we start winning. We will win, and we will win big. I say that with such confidence because I've been doing it for the last 25 years. I know that we can win here. I felt it from the moment that I stepped foot on campus. Today, we will act like winners. Today, we will carry ourselves like winners. Today, we will look like winners. I'm prepared for this moment. This program is a sleeping giant, and it needs to be awakened. The lack of success within this program have scared many coaches off, but not me. I look at this program as an opportunity, an opportunity to do something that's never been done before. But I need your help. I can't do this alone. We, we must all be in. From the administration, support staff, players, students, community, and the state of Pennsylvania, all in. This is the city of champions. It's time we do our part. It's time to get to work. It's time to play for and win championships. Thank you once again for being here. Hail to Pitt.
Guys, now at this time, we're going to be open for questions. Raise your hand, state your affiliation and name, and uh, pass it along to the next person. I'm Coach um, Dominic Campbell with Picture Sports Now. I wanted to know what your negotiations were like with uh, Heather and just um, how it all came together to get here to Pitt today. Well, uh, the transition was probably the easiest that I've ever been part of um, when you're working with such a professional and somebody that I've known, um, the transparency was flawless. And uh, like I said, it was a whirlwind. It happened fast, um, but it was great. Gr great transition. Coach, Corey Chris at DK Pittsburgh Sports. Uh, just curious on your thoughts and your standpoint on tackling the transfer portal and NIL in this fast landscape of college basketball that we're on now in. Yeah, well, we're gonna be really busy. And there's no question about that. You know, I'm just super excited about the four players that we have in our program right now. You know, they're my main priority. And I had the opportunity to meet with them a little while ago and uh, spent some time. And I'm excited to coach them. Um, I can't do this by myself. And I'm going to be there for them every step of the way. But we're going to tackle the portal. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's a lot of work to be done here in the next 48 hours. And you could bet as soon as I get the opportunity, okay, I'm gonna be tackling on that. Uh, but we have a great opportunity to bring in great players, players that can impact and help us win now. We're not waiting for three years. We're not, we're not saying that we need all this time to you know, rebuild and get the right people in. We're, we're not waiting, we're winning. And I don't know, I can't sit here before you and tell you a number, but what I'm gonna tell you is that this team will be different. This team will be different, and we will play hard, and we will play smart, and we will play together. And the last bit, and the last piece is we will have fun. And I think there's a lot of coaches around the country that really miss that element. But when our fans and when our community leave our games, they're going to say one thing, wow, they play really, really hard. Because that's, good, that's a controllable. You can control how hard you play and we're gonna play it the right way. Abby, excuse me, Abby Schnabel, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Heather, at what point did you know that Verdi was your guy? And Verdi, at what point did you know that you wanted to coach this team? I'll tell you that we uh, scoured the country. You know, We talked to a lot of coaches. Um, and uh, I knew Early on, his impact, you know, what, what type of person he is and his desire to be here at Pitt. Um, but we had to do our due diligence and go through our process. Um, I knew last night I couldn't wait to call coach um, because I was really confident that we, he would be all in and, and want to be here at Pitt. And I couldn't wait for you to call me <laughs> and take that call. <laughs> Uh, and, and I totally understand, you know, the process, and I respect the process. And um, I knew from the moment I stepped on campus, I've never been uh, to this campus before. Um, you know, but I've done my homework. You know, as soon as it came open a month ago, um, I did my homework uh, on the university and just the facilities in the school, in the environment, and it's a special place, the diversity. I know that we are going to be able to recruit here. I know we're gonna be able to get special players, but more importantly, we're gonna get special people. And we're gonna turn this thing around, you know, and uh, it's gonna be pretty special when, when we do it. But uh, I knew a month ago, I just had to wait a little bit. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Mike, Mike Lowe from the Tribune Review. Tribune Review. I think you addressed a little bit of my, uh, what my question was going to be about coming in and uh, how much have you had an opportunity to, uh, to speak with the, you know, with the current players and mm -hmm. uh, talk with them about the program and, uh, and what are your, your plans over the next uh, you know, couple of days and maybe a week to, to, you know, to, talk, to talk more with them about, uh, about the program and their thoughts on that? Well, we have seven players. You know, we have four that are here today, and we have three that um, are incoming. And so um, I will visit with them on the phone as soon as I can here today um, because that's important. 
you know, as I said before, these guys in front of me, they're my priority. And then, you know, I have a lot of work to do as far as, you know, contacting, uh, you know, pers uh, prospective student athletes. Um, so um, I'm going to be ripping and running and, uh, you know, flying back and forth. And, uh, but I'm excited about this. I'm excited about the task at hand. And um, I'm excited about the people that I'm going to bring in. And I know that, that at the end of the day, you're going to be proud. And you're going to be proud of our players. You're going to be proud of how they rep them, represent themselves both on and off the court. And they're going to be winners. They're going to be winners at life as well because my job does not stop on the court. My job is to prepare our student athletes academically, athletically, and socially. That's my job. And to prepare them for life so that when they leave here, they can be successful in an interview. When they leave here, they're ready to go and tackle life. And that's my job. It, there's more to basketball than just basketball. Coach, uh, it took a couple years at UMass to kind of build it back up before, you know, 20 plus win seasons started to come along. How much of a process do you figure? I know you talked about how rapidly you want to get going and how rapidly you want to build this here, but is there a little bit of patience you learned from that time at UMass that could be applied here? Patience. I think everyone wants instant gratification, all right? But I will tell you this, there's, n there's nobody out here that's more competitive than myself, and there's nobody out here that wants to win more than myself. And so I don't have patience. I mean, I think that's probably one thing ab about myself as far in, in, in when you relate it to basketball, you know? But winning's hard. Winning is hard, really hard. And 20 win seasons, all right, don't come very often. And, you know, like I said, I'm not going to stand before you and tell you that, you know, it's going to take three years to, to win 20 games. When I was at Eastern Michigan, all right, we won eight games my first year. And we had the biggest turnaround, and we went from eight games to 18, to 24, to do a Sweet 16 and NIT. You know, so anything is possible. You know, and, and it's about going out and, and finding the right players that fit my system to be different. And that's exactly what we're going to be. We're going to be different in the ACC. Heather, we talk a lot about the instant gratification that can be hard to find in the first season. But how are you and the rest of the administration going to measure success in this program throughout the first year since it can be hard to kind of build up that momentum? Sure. Uh, you know, what, most importantly, we're going to look to build a program that is you know, the relationships with the student athletes are really important. We've got to embrace them and um, build a team mentality. Um, that's first and foremost. Secondly, you know, it's all about seeing progress, right? You know, um, there's a trajectory that happens. It doesn't just go from zero to 100 in, you know, overnight. And so there's got to be continued progress and improvement. And I always tell coaches, you know, let's get in the hunt. Right. You know, you're not going to win overnight, but there's a big difference between losing by 30 and losing by five. Right. And losing by two. And so we're going to we get into the hunt of winning. You're going to win some games and it does take time. We've got to you know, I mean, we have seven kids on the roster. And so um, coach, you know, I think that the best thing was he spent some time on campus. He got a feel for it. He understands he had great quality time with our other coaches who have been able to build and sustain success here. Um, those relationships with other head coaches here who have been able to do it will be invaluable because it's not just your selling belief. They've proven it here at Pitt. And so there's a, it will take a little time, but um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be excited to see a steady trajectory in the positive direction. Um, coach, um, I, I'm obviously sure you know who Shauna Green is. Uh, she coached at Duke Dayton, and she's at uh, Illinois now. Um, she took over that program and really turned them into an NCAA tournament team in just uh, one season. Um, how much do you see in her and how, trying to emulate what she succeeded in? How can you do that at Pitt? Well, she was at Dayton, okay? And I'm not going to emulate her because I beat her in the A-10 championship game. Okay? But I appreciate your question. Respectfully. She did a fabulous job. There's no question. She was up for National Coach of the Year. There is no question about that, what she did. And I thought that she, you know, did a great job of, you know, tackling the, the portal and getting, you know, some really good kids in. And she took some kids from Dayton with her. Um, their starting point guard, which who um, 
you know, was uh, first team, um, all Big Ten, you know, and, and so those things help. But I thought that she did a great job, a masterful job, in how uh, she built, you know, the culture there first. And in her mentality, which I know is she wants to outwork you, you know, and, and we're very similar in that regard because your effort, that's controllable. And that's where, you know, it's a non-negotiable for myself and my team. We will not be outworked. We will not be outworked. And that's something that I, I know the fans will appreciate. We're going to be hard-nosed. We're going to be blue-collar blue to the T. And we're going to compete each and every single night. Coach, is there a aspect that maybe is unique or stands out to you about what makes you think that your system that you put in place through your time at Eastern Michigan and at UMass could translate over to succeed in the ACC? Yeah. Well, both at uh, Eastern and in the MAC and, you know, at UMass uh, in the A-10, we led both leagues in scoring. I mean, this past year, we averaged 76 points per game. So we're going to play fast, we'll play furious, and we have some fun. Um, but we're going to be different in what we do. You know, we're not going to allow a team to come in here, all right, and just be able to run offensively and be comfortable. And we're going to mix things up. We're going to keep them guessing. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do basketball-wise to control your opponent. But the first thing is the teams in the ACC will no longer come in here feeling comfortable. And that's where we need everyone's support. We need fans at our game. We need, all right, to have a home court advantage. And we're going to build this. We're going to build this. We're going to build it together. And it's going to be something that everyone's going to be proud of. Which Nick Fairbaugh, pit to the point, you've built two programs up at Eastern Michigan and UMass. What are some common characteristics that you have identified that are key to building a program up from where it is, say, now at Pitt to where you maybe go to the NCAA tournament in a few years? Well, how you build up a, a, a team to be successful is, one, you got to have great culture because you can have great players. doesn't mean that you're going to win. You need to be connected. You need to have a foundation. There needs to be a level of love and respect for one another. Because once you hit adversity and you're not and you're not together, you're going to implode and you're not going to be successful. I mean, you know, and, and the last thing is we need character. And we need players who have an unbelievable competitive spirit. Competitive spirit. And that be and you could see that you could identify that. You got, as a coach, you could identify someone's love for what they're doing. And we need players who are invested. We need players who have two feet in here all the time. We need players who are on the bus. Heather, at what point throughout your search process and the committee's search process did it become more evident and perhaps clear that Coach Verdi was the prime candidate for this program? You know, again, I'll, I'll say that we, the process was, um, you know, in, you know, inclusive. Um, we interviewed a lot of different people. Um, it's a huge network of, of coaches out there. Um, all along, I knew the qualities that Coach Verdi would bring. Um, and at the end of the day, what was most important is he was confident in his abilities. Um, he has built programs and elevated them from ground zero. Um, and that, that, that to me was really valuable. The other most important thing is you gotta have some confidence. You gotta have some courage and confidence in yourself to say, you know what, I'm gonna go and take on this challenge and we're gonna do it together. And um, he wants to be at Pitt. He understands the quality of a world-class academic institution, athletic department that has proven an, in multiple programs that you can bring in the right leaders and they start to build this success and it's contagious and i think that he saw that and we saw that i, I certainly know that in his ability to build a program so uh, you know to me at that point when 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 you look at all those factors and you can teach a lot of things but you can't teach confidence you can't teach belief and you can't debate the success, you know, and, and, and how hard it is to do it at the places he's done it. So that's really what um, was most important to us. And I know the, 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 the family relationships and the quality of relationships he has with people and kids. Um, I've seen and witnessed that. That was, again, you, you know, those are things that you can't teach and you can hope for, but 
um, you know, that those are real, real relationships. Coach, you have experience coaching across the country, but particularly in New England. Um, how important is that, those ties in New England are going to be for this PIP program going forward? Well, I mean, I coach in the Midwest, I've, uh, you know, for five years at uh, – the University of Nebraska and two years at uh, University of Kansas and obviously another four years in Michigan. So I feel that I, I you know, I have a lot of balance there and we're, we're going to target, we're going to start right here and then work our way out. We're going to go north, we're going to go south, we're going to go east and west. And I don't need to fly all over the world. I mean, I just, I'm not high maintenance. I get in my car and I could just drive, you know, a couple hours here and there, you know, and, um, but as to answer your question, we're, we're going to target and you know, I'm very well connected in, in New York, New Jersey, and the DMV, you know, and so um, those are the areas that we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to target. Um, Coach, uh, you've also been pretty vocal about uh, being better than other teams. Um, I mean, I know you don't know Dan Burt from Duquesne, a big rivalry game for Pitt. Um, how do you hope to keep that uh, rivalry going and that the ferocity between the two teams? Well, I mean... Three months ago, when we played him, we beat we beat them by 30. So I'm gonna have to have a conversation with Dan and ask him if he wants to continue to play. No, Dan and I, Dan and I are actually we're 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 good friends, and and I appreciate you know I mean he's been in the league the, you know uh, the whole time that I was there obviously and and, and before, but uh, you know I, I just think that uh, the fact that they're right across you know the road here and um, it's just a great game for both schools um, and a great opportunity. Um, so, um, you know, we have some work to do, um, and, and before I start, you know, talking and challenging Dan again, you know, we got to make sure that our, our roster is complete. Um, hi, Coach. My name is Donnie Blackwell. I'm for Pitch to the Point. Um, you kind of talked about the culture that you want to create here, and I'm pretty sure you've heard about the Oakland Zoo. So how are you preparing to coach in the Oakland Zoo and bring fans to the women basketball games? Yeah, I'm going to do everything possible, and I'm going to get with marketing and, you know, try to get on campus. I want to meet, meet the students here on campus. I want to give them reason to come watch our players because they deserve that. I mean, we're going to put a product out on the floor that people are going to be super excited to watch. And so I'm going to, that's my message. That's my story. I'm, I'm going to rip it. I'm going to run all over campus. I'm going to tell my story to whoever will listen that they need to come and watch our team because they work hard. They're going to work hard each and every single day, and they deserve that. So however I could do it, if you give me, you know, a speaker, you give me a microphone, I mean, a megaphone, I will go out marching, and I'm going to tell our story, and I'm going to do everything possible that I can to get people to come out and watch our players. Coach, this past Women's Final Four, in particular the National Championship game, set record views across the country yeah. for you know, television. I mean, what do, you, what do you feel about the landscape of women's college basketball and how it's advancing? And just what are your general thoughts about that program and that product being on the national stage like that in such a light? Yeah, it's epic. And, and, and it's something that should have been done a long time ago. And I think that, you know, uh, people around the country and, and world are understanding the value, you know, of the game of basketball that women play. Um, and it, it's terrific to see. And um, it's exciting to watch. And you go through and, and you see the Caitlin Clarks of the world. And, you know, it's just great basketball. And, um, you know, our goal is, is to get there one day. And we will. And we will. And um, But uh, I just think that, um, you know, as for us specifically, you know, the further we go, obviously the more attention we're going to get. And we will be nationally recognized. we got some work to do. Um, Coach, uh, Heather spoke about how winning is contagious and how um, this athletic department's really been improving, especially women's, ba women's uh, soccer, men's soccer, volleyball, et cetera. Yep. How do you see that contagious uh, winning effect possibly transferring over to the women's basketball program? Well, first, you got, you know, I, I had a great opportunity to visit with several of them at, at lunch on my visit. And, you know, I would be a dummy if I didn't go rub elbows and talk to, you know, the coaches here on campus that have successful, successful programs. I want to know what they're doing. I want to know how what they're selling. I want to know their philosophies, you know, and eventually I'll come up with, you know, my own thing, but, you know, I'd be crazy not to ask them. And, um, you know, if they're doing it, I want to know. And I'm going to be relentless.
Thank you for your time. Hope